So I'm European. I am the executive vice president of technology and innovation in charge of sustainability of a chemical company. Therefore, I'm going to talk to you in the next uh, 11 minutes and something uh, uh, on uh, the chemical industry, Europe, uh, and innovation. And I have three slides from you for you. And uh, the first, I guess, you see on the screen. You have three numbers uh, there. Uh, as I told you, I am in charge of uh, sustainability. So the key tenets of sustainability for uh, anybody are the economic, the social, and the environmental aspect. Actually, these three numbers are cheating a little bit because they are actually four, and they represent uh, these uh, three dimensions. So 5% uh, is actually the percent of the global GDP of the world represented by the chemical industry. 10 uh, happens to be the number of uh, indirect and induced jobs which are generated by every job in the chemical industry. So we can say that as chemical industry, all together in the world, uh, we, uh, let's say, drive uh, something like 200 million jobs, which is one of the largest uh, uh, you can uh, see in uh, the global industry. At the same time, we consume about 10% of the fossil resources of the world uh, as an industry, and we produce 5% of the CO2 emissions uh, of uh, the world. Therefore, I think that I don't need uh, to spend too many words in uh, convincing you that uh, our uh, contribution uh, to the future has to look uh, primarily into, on one side, uh, limiting the second part, uh, so the second 10 and the second 5, uh, that is the consumption of uh, resources uh, and uh, the uh, amount of uh, CO2 we are generating, whilst uh, uh, it is very important uh, to focus on the first two, that is uh, the uh, generation of additional jobs, because from a sustainability point of view, we all think about CO2, but one of the biggest challenges for the future is actually a lot of new people who are going to need a good job, and definitely we can offer quite a bit of help in that direction. And uh, for this segment, uh, uh, I will finish uh, with uh, one more 10 uh, for you. 10 uh, is the typical time it takes to us uh, to generate uh, a new product. And uh, uh, by the way, uh, it is not in sync with the rest of the industry. Only the aerospace industry is as low as the chemical industry. So one important uh, challenge for us is to bet on opportunities so that we can be ready for the next company wanting to develop a cell phone. And by the way, the time it takes to develop a new cell phone is one year, so significantly less, one order of magnitude less of the time it takes for us. Now let me move to the next uh, three numbers and let me talk about uh, Europe. And in this case, I want to tell you about uh, one thing Europe cannot do, one thing Europe shouldn't do, and one thing uh, Europe must do. And these numbers are 1, 4, and 12, and 1, 4, and 12 happen to be the cost per million BTU of uh, uh, methane. So 1 billion uh, BTU of methane costs about, uh, actually, on the average, uh, about $1 in the Middle East, it costs $4 in the United States, it costs $12 here in Europe. So the thing Europe cannot do is to compete on cost, in particular on cost of energy and cost of feedstock. It is just not possible and it's not going to happen if you look at both the technologies as well as the resources which are available and known to us. The second thing is, is what Europe shouldn't do is that Europe shouldn't take shortcuts in the sense that we all can be tempted to get the government to subsidize us and to put in place a mechanism to drive the economy or the innovation in a certain direction or the other. And we are seeing some distortions which have been brought, for instance, in the case of, of, of energy itself, where we, we drove to situations whereby at certain times in the day, which happens to be a very close relative of that 12, we have energy a negative price uh, in, uh, in Europe. And finally, let me uh, address what uh, Europe, on the other hand, uh, has uh, to do or must do, and it is uh, being bold uh, and looking the directions where uh, there is uh, and there will be competitive advantage going forward in time. So the likes of myself who have a choice uh, 
in uh, putting investment uh, in uh, uh, Europe or in the United States uh, or in China or in India are fundamentally looking at uh, uh, three key factors. On one side, uh, the proximity uh, if you are in the chemical industry to your manufacturing assets, uh, because that is uh, essential uh, uh, to uh, drive uh, your uh, success on the cost side. But more importantly, we are looking at the talent uh, and we are looking at uh, the proximity to specifiers. So the ability to keep having uh, a very strong source of talent uh, and uh, a strong uh, uh, leadership from a technology point of view, for instance, in precision mechanics or in the electrical industry, are vital for the continuing uh, success uh, here in, uh, uh, in Europe. And let me now turn uh, to the last uh, uh, numbers. So you see three more numbers here, then five, four, and 82.8. So let me start with uh, five and four. And that five and four actually come from the Global Innovation Index, uh, which uh, defined uh, the top 20 regions uh, from a patenting point of view, and the top uh, 20 regions uh, from uh, uh, a startup uh, effectiveness uh, point of view. So it so happens that Europe has five of the top uh, 20 regions in the world in terms of uh, patent uh, uh, intensity. For your curiosity, three of them are in Germany, uh, across the river. One of them is where we are, and uh, the other one happens to be uh, Ile-de-France. Then there are four uh, key startup uh, uh, hubs in uh, Europe for the combination of availability of uh, talent and intensity of uh, um, financing, and uh, uh, I think that uh, it is obvious uh, to anybody that uh, making sure that uh, we don't uh, see uh, what we have seen uh, between uh, uh, the first uh, uh, part of the last decade and the last part of uh, the last decade, that is to see a reduction uh, in the overall patent intensity in Europe as compared to competitors something which we shouldn't uh, see, so it's another one of uh, those areas where uh, Europe should not go in that direction. I think that uh, uh, strengthening uh, the ability to innovate is uh, critical. And uh, lastly, uh, forming an environment which is more conducive for uh, uh, breakthrough innovation and for starting uh, new businesses, I think that it is uh, definitely vital for uh, this part of the world. And uh, I would like to uh, then uh, come to the 82.8. 82.8 happens to be the number of exabytes uh, which uh, is going to be exchanged uh, only in smartphones uh, in 2015, according to the usual forecast. This one coming from uh, Cisco, to be precise. This number was uh, only seven if you looked at it in 2011. So uh, this is one of those Moore law type uh, situations. So the amount of information which is being exchanged uh, in the world uh, is uh, increasing uh, uh, with uh, the classic uh, positive second derivative, a very pronounced uh, positive second derivative. So what uh, I would like to spend my last uh, minutes uh, trying to convince you to, to do is to look at uh, uh, a couple of uh, really key elements uh, for innovation. We already said uh, proximity to uh, excellence in technology, providing uh, the right type of environment, uh, providing uh, 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 ways uh, to have uh, a lot of excellent talent, absolutely. But then uh, there are uh, two more uh, things which are coming our way. The first uh, thing is that uh, the availability of information is increasing exponentially. So uh, today there is an availability of information which is unheard of. The second uh, uh, thing uh, is that uh, not only there is uh, uh, a lot of information coming, but uh, the new generation of uh, children uh, uh, and the new generation of young adults uh, come with a completely different attitude to uh, learning. It is not uh, anymore the learning by books, it is the learning with the, the iPad, it is a learning which uh, to a certain extent uh, goes back to the Renaissance when uh, people used to walk uh, with, uh, or even to the old ages, uh, when people used to walk with uh, philosophers uh, and uh, learn uh, from uh, them and uh, repeat what uh, they said and confront it with uh, what somebody else has said. The only difference is that today it's not uh, walking but it is uh, 
surfing uh, in, the, in the internet. And uh, therefore, uh, what I would like to submit to you uh, as uh, a summary of uh, what is uh, the connection between the chemical industry, what has been done in Europe, uh, and uh, what is, uh, uh, if you want, uh, the path forward from an innovation point of view, is that there are, uh, I think, uh, two key uh, attitudes uh, which uh, are uh, uh, particularly critical at the interface uh, between uh, three these three aspects. Uh, one uh, is simplicity. I think that uh, you can describe uh, a topic uh, which uh, sounds very complicated with uh, three sets of numbers and with uh, three slides. So the, the world is more simple than what the people think, uh, and the simplicity is an attitude uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is important. The second attitude, which I think is critical, and it is particularly critical in Europe, is boldness. Europe cannot save itself uh, by uh, saving uh, a few more uh, uh, gigajoules uh, from an energy point of view, cannot create uh, significant uh, new jobs uh, by uh, uh, getting uh, some uh, uh, governments uh, to uh, drive things in a certain direction or the other. And therefore, boldness is a critical attitude. Skill sets, I think uh, that uh, uh, from what I said, it is obvious that I believe in numbers, so, so I uh, submit to you that numeracy is a very critical uh, skill set uh, going forward uh, in time. The ability to discriminate between uh, good and uh, evil on a numeric basis, in particular in science, is uh, and will remain uh, a very important uh, uh, asset for, uh, for all of us. And I will use the last 27 seconds to try to convince you that uh, overarching goal of uh, those uh, is connectivity. So the ability to connect, uh, the ability to network uh, is uh, what will make a success or lack thereof in the future. And uh, I really encourage this uh, community to, uh, of course, uh, abide and comply with uh, the uh, right regulations from an IP point of view, but connect to each other, work with each other, talk to each other. Thank you. Thank you very much.